Hello, welcome to the first Tracy Developer Meetup of 2020. Um, so I'm trying something new today. We're going to be streaming on YouTube instead of Twitch. Um, I've seen a lot of success with creators streaming directly to YouTube rather than uh, Twitch, so I figured I'd try it out. I am monitoring the chat as well, or at least I'm trying to, uh, so this will be an experience. Nolan, thank you for showing up. Glad to have you here. Um, if you want to engage live, and I definitely encourage you to, uh, participate in that chat, uh, comment, hit that like button on the YouTube channel or the YouTube video, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, get engaged. The topic of this evening is going to be uh, game development. So we're going to be seeing uh, an introduction to developing games, this time with Unity. So hopefully this will be a fun stream to start off the year. Um, and it'll lead us into other streams that we have um, for the remaining months. So so one, one stream per month for the Tracy Developer Meetup until we can meet in person. And then hopefully uh, we start doing th these things live in person. All right, so let me start things off. I will uh, share my screen. I wanna, I wanna just bring up the Tracy Developer Meetup page. Um, thinking that you can see my screen right now. Uh, so this is our event page. So this is tracydevs.com. Um, it's going to show you the upcoming events today, of course, being making games and taking names. Um, but we do have a, a nice lineup in the works uh, with a few uh, titles to be, uh, to be announced. So we have some Lambda, um, next month in February, we, I believe we're going to be having some OAuth related, uh, topics in March. I believe Corbin's going to be doing rust development in April. And then we're going to be looking at, uh, serverless workflows with, with pipe dream. So a, a busy year so far. Uh, if you do want to speak at the group, I encourage you to it, to do it. Just go on this page, send me an email. Um, and we can figure out what, what makes the most sense for you to present on. And you could be a first time presenter. You don't have to be. Uh, this doesn't have to be your thousandth presentation. Um, so we're, we're open to newbies as well, and we're very encouraging. All right, so the topic of tonight is Unity. Um, so it is a game development framework, one of many, but it is probably one of the more popular ones side-by-side uh, -side with Unreal Engine. Um, so this is a freemium technology. So the license is basically, it's free to use until you reach $100,000 in sales. And then you have to start paying for it, which is, is pretty nice because if you've made it to $100,000 in sales, well, you're probably doing quite well. So we're going to be looking at this one. Uh, we're going to be doing everything from scratch, learning how to make games. Uh, and we're going to be using free assets along the way. If you have Unity installed, I encourage you to participate. Again, we are live, so please stop me in the chat if, uh, if you have a question. Uh, but let's let's go ahead and dive into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Unity and I'm going to choose to create a new project. And when I when I started this evening, uh, kind of today, I was trying to figure out, well, should I do slides or should I just go right into Unity? Because since this is game development, it's a little more exciting just to do it live. Didn't want to bore anyone with slides. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, doing this live. We're going to create a 2D game. And I'm going to be walking over all of the concepts as well as we as we progress. Uh, for this 2D game, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Tracy Devs, and I'm going to say Create. And it'll take just a minute to to create. went down the wrong pipe there. Oh. <coughs> All right. Um, if, if I'm having any kind of technical difficulties with the stream, like uh, maybe the audio isn't right. <coughs> Sorry. If the audio isn't right or the video isn't right, please let me know. Again, this is my first time streaming to YouTube for this meetup. Um, so I imagine there could be problems along the way. All right, Let's see what we got here. I think my unity is spazzing out here. That's unfortunate. We'll get it working though.
so far that everything's great awesome thanks it thanks nolan all right so we have unity up and i realize that along the way uh things might be a little little small i'm going to do my best to to talk through it um i don't really know how to to zoom in on unity i think i maybe i think there's a way for me to to zoom in with uh my mouse but i'm not sure um but we won't worry about it uh, i'll just talk you through it so this is a blank unity project i chose 2d because that's kind of what i have experience in um so little little background here i'm not a professional game developer uh, i do this as a hobby i've released a few games to the app store at some point in time i i fiddle around with it i have a lot of fun with it, it it's a huge amount of fun to make to make games but i don't do this professionally so i don't do 3d games and i just play around with 2d games so this is an empty scene so by default when you create a new project you're left with a sample scene and a main camera you're probably going to have numerous scenes in your game so a scene is is no different than a scene in a television show or a movie uh, they represent different different parts of your game so you could have a scene that represents your main menu a scene that that represents level one a scene that represents level two a game over scene you can have many scenes and inside of those scenes you have all of your game objects so game objects is just this generic term for anything that could reside in your scene so for example the main camera even though that it does represent the viewport here it is in fact a game object uh, it is a game object but it has components attached to it so what defines what a game object is is the components that are attached to it so for example this particular main camera game object has the camera component and you'll notice that there are quite a few components that we're going to be adding to each of these game objects as we progress and it really defines what each game object is so we're going to continue inside of sample scene and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new game object so you can do that numerous ways. You can either right click inside of this uh, hierarchy of the uh, sample scene, and I can say create game, empty game object, or I can choose one of the kind of predefined game objects. I can also go to game object in the menu up there and do that uh, the same way. Now, we will be choosing a variety of game objects throughout uh, this evening. But for this particular one, just to show you how everything works, we're going to start with an empty game object. So just a blank slate. It just has positional information. It doesn't have anything else associated to it. We're up. Oh, got a comment coming in. Did the resolution shift my screen? Both your desktop and camera are super blurry now. Um, if I had to guess, that might be my Internet connection. So let me check. Um, it does not look like I'm dropping frames. It looks like everything's stable. So I, it doesn't look like it's me. Um, let me look at my stream health. Uh, it says the stream is, uh, healthy. So I don't know. Never mind. It somehow fixed itself. All right. Good to know. But thanks for stopping me. I do want to make sure that uh, it doesn't get messed up along the way. Um, we're going to create this, this empty game object. Um, we're going to name it player. Um, and we're going to make this into a sprite. Uh, we want this to be a sprite. We want it to have a texture attached to it. So what I can do is I can go over with it selected. I can go to add component and I can type in sprite renderer. And I can click OK. So you can add images to Unity. You can add sprites. They are more or less the same thing. They, they, show, they show an image on the screen. You could add uh, scripts to them. You could add other components to them. Uh, the difference happens kind of behind the scenes with Unity. Sprites are, are processed a little differently. So they're recommended when it comes to physics and collisions and all of that good stuff. Uh, but really figure out what you're trying to add here. If it's, a, if it's just going to be like a background image or if it's going to be something that, that involves interaction. The resolution has been fine for me. Thank, thanks, Pix, uh, Perfect Machine. All right, so again, we've added a sprite renderer, but if we look at our camera, if I hit this play button here to preview, we've got nothing there in the viewport. Um, so we need to attach an image. And rather than me trying to draw an image on this stream, even if I was off the stream, I still wouldn't be able to draw a very good image. Uh, we're going to look at some of the free assets that Unity offers. Uh, so they actually have the Unity Asset Store. Um, so this is a kind of perk of using Unity. 
And if I were to go to assets and click on 2D, and FYI, it's assetstore.unity.com. We have the option to choose from various uh, asset packages. Now, if I go ahead and click this little toggle here for free assets, we have a pretty large variety of assets that we can use in our game free of charge. And this is what we're gonna be doing for this particular game. Um, so it's gonna save us a lot of time, and yet we can still create something that is very unique um, in this in in when it comes to your gameplay experience. So even if you were to use some of these pre-made assets and you were to release it to the App Store or wherever you plan to release, uh, you're still gonna have a very nice game. Uh, so we're actually gonna look at two. So I am going to open up this one in a new tab. I'm also going to open up another asset called Astronaut. We're gonna actually start with the Astronaut asset. So these are both free. Uh, the Astronaut asset is a uh, character sprite and it actually has many different animations included with it so I hit this play button hopefully it plays but these are the all of the various animations that this free asset has that we're going to be using and I'll just I'll play the static image right here now to do to, to work with this you will need a unity account it's free um, and then you would just uh, you would just add it to your cart and purchase it for free and then you would open you can open up in unity or inside of unity what you can do is you can open up the uh, the package manager and you can click on my assets and you can choose to add it to your project so I'm gonna say import the astronaut and it's gonna take a while so it's gonna ask me what I want to import I'm just gonna say everything for this and the reason why it's gonna take a while is you saw there was there was many different animated sprites uh, in that preview and they're all gonna be semi-decent uh, resolution. So they're, they're gonna look good on high resolution screens. Uh, it's taking a while to import because when you animate a sprite, especially a sprite that you want it to look uh, buttery smooth or, or fluid, uh, you're gonna have a lot of frames. And each frame is gonna be a separate image. So if you have a animation that has like 60 different frames, you're gonna be working with a large file set. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to import. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead and go back into the Unity Asset Store. Let's look at that other one that we were going to look at. So this is the one that I like using because, it, I don't know, I kind of like the art style. It reminds me of Super Mario Brothers uh, for Super Nintendo. But this is basically an environment um, asset pack. So it lets you build worlds. And we're going to be using this to build our level for the game that we're going to be using. Um, so we're going to get to that in a moment. Let's go ahead and see if our asset was imported. It looks like it was. So what it did was it went, it created a new directory, which is the author's name inside of our assets folder. So this is just a folder in our project. And inside of it, we have the actual asset pack by that author. And we have each of the asset pieces that that uh, author has decided to give us. Um, so we have animations, we have a demo, which is just a scene with a bunch of animations on it. Uh, we have prefabs, which I'll get into soon. Uh, we have the sprite graphics. Uh, and then we have tile map, which we'll get into soon as well. So let's go ahead and uh, first of all, let's look at the sprites. So we want to give this player game object an image to work with. So let's go ahead and look inside of our sprite list. There, you can see that there's quite a few. I'm actually going to look for idle, and it's actually right here, character idle. And if I were to expand this to see each of the frames inside of that particular sprite sheet, uh, there are quite a few frames. What, are, what do we have here? 62 frames. We're only going to look at idle zero. So I am going to click on player and I'm going to drag idle zero into sprite. And as you can see, it added an image to this game object. The game object was always there. It just never had any kind of image to represent it. Um, so now we have an image. And if I were to hit play, uh, we basically have, have nothing really going on. So let me zoom in a bit. We just have an image there sitting there. Uh, so great. So we're going to expand upon it uh, as we progress here. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, what we probably want a world to work with. Uh, and this is, bef well, actually, let's go ahead and, and continue down our sprite. So our sprite, uh, we know that this is going to be our player. We want to hopefully uh, one day control it. Um, so let's go ahead and add some physics. 
So we added a, a sprite image, just a static image. Now let's go ahead and add a new component to our player because that's what's selected. And we're gonna choose rigid body. Now this is a 2D game, this is a 2D sprite, so I'm gonna choose rigid body 2D. Now, by adding rigid body 2D, if I did nothing else and hit the play button, we have a sprite that falls off the screen. Because now our sprite has physics added to it. It has a mass and it follows the rules of gravity. And if we had any kind of collision, we would follow the rules of any kind of angular uh, drag, linear drag, we could have friction, uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. But our player is just falling off the screen. So now we probably want some, some ground for it to land on. This is where we get into another type of game object. So when it comes to building environments, we have a few options. We can either create a massive image, place that massive image on the screen, and then navigate it like we would anything else. Uh, the, the problem with that is if we have a massive image, it's gonna create, it's gonna take more compute power uh, to be able to render and navigate. So on mobile devices, uh, maybe even the Nintendo Switch, it may struggle. Uh, because Unity, Unity lets you export these games to pretty much every platform that exists. You wanna export it to PC? Sure. Xbox, PlayStation, uh, mobile, iOS, Android, it works. Unity does a great job of being uh, cross-platform. Um, so what we want to do instead, instead of using one massive image, uh, is to use a t what's called a tile map. So a tile map lets you draw tiles on the screen of smaller images, and then Unity will only render what's in this camera viewport. Uh, so it makes it very efficient. So let's go ahead and right click on our uh, project area, and we're going to create a new 2D object. We're going to navigate to Tile Map, and then I'm going to click on Rectangular. Uh, so I'm going to name this actually Ground. It added a uh, Tile Map inside of a grid, so it's a child element for me. Uh, you'll notice, hopefully, uh, hopefully it shows on, on the stream, this is an actual grid. And these are the tiles that we can actually paint on. So we're going to paint on them as if it was like Microsoft Paint or some other old school paint program. So what we need to do is we need to create a uh, tile palette. Let's go ahead and open the tile palette. I'm going to actually pin it down here. It lets me. I want to see if I can drag it over. There we go. So we have a tile palette right there. Uh, this is actually a tile palette that was provided with the astronaut. We're actually not going to use that tile palette. We're going to create our own. Uh, we're going to use the uh, pixel adventure tile map. So we're gonna go back into the asset manager, so the pack package manager, and I'm going to include pixel adventure one, and I'm gonna import. This is a much smaller package, it'll, it'll be quick. All right, so it's already added. So it created a new directory. Uh, this one's called pixel adventure. Uh, we have our assets. And uh, we're going to be working primarily with the terrain for this example. Um, so the terrain, we have two images. We have one that's that's not chopped up, and we have another that, that's chopped up for us based on what the author has provided us. We're going to use the chopped up version. But uh, it is advertising that it is 16 by 16 for each of the squares. Um, so we do need to make a, an adjustment here. So when we add things to Unity, it's going to default to 100 pixels per unit. But we know that these are 16 pixels per unit. So we have to adjust it. Otherwise, our, our resolutions are going to be kind of weird. So we're going to adjust it to, to 16 pixels per unit. I'm going to click Apply. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Create a new tile map. Uh, because we don't want to just drag them onto the screen. They'll just be images in that sense. They, they won't offer any benefit for us. So I am going to say Create new new palette. And I'm going to call this one Pixel Adventure. I'll just call it Pixel Adventure. I'm going to say Create. Uh, I'm going to leave it inside of the Terrain directory. And it created a, a tile palette for us. Now, to add things to the tile palette, what I want to do is I want to select each of these individual tiles that was provided to us in this asset package. So I'm going to select all of the tiles. And I'm going to drag them into our tile palette. And it's going to ask me to, to, to select a folder again. It's going to it's going to save uh, some, some meta information in that folder for us. 
Now it created a, a it, it added it all here. Even though that we added small 16 by 16 sized images, it it added them into a, a square kind of block. But this is where it gets neat. So if I were to select the ground and I were to select one of these these uh, these squares, I can use the paintbrush tool and I can just drop it in. So let's go ahead and maybe um, I'll, I'll paint it there. I can switch tiles. I can close it off. You just have to become familiar with what each of these uh, are. Uh, we can add a, a corner. We can close it off there. Add that. Uh, what I can also do is, is maybe I do this. what we got I'll just this will be a small level maybe I add one of these in there add a corner see if I can find the other edge here and let's go ahead and throw one of those in um, so I just drew a level um, so if I were to hit play here The astronaut still falls through. Uh, so it's it falls through because we don't have any kind of collision information set. We have we have physics on the actual sprite. We don't have any colliders set up. Uh, so it still falls through. However, uh, you'll notice that we do have a semi-attractive looking terrain. Now it, it's designed to be pixelated like that because that's just what the uh, asset package is. You can get a higher resolution asset package. You can build your own as well. These you have to remember these are 16 by 16 tiles. They're not they're not like 512 by 512 or anything. Um, so let's work with that. I don't like the way that this looks for some reason. So I'm going to add another right there. Um, if I ever wanted to, what I could do is I can start deleting tiles, um, and that works just as fine too. So um, it, it's actually quite easy. I could actually layer this. Um, so I could add another tile map inside the grid and I can treat it as a layer. So for example, maybe I wanted uh, traps to be another layer. I want the ground to be cool and, and just static and you can collide with it. And then a trap, maybe I assign different logic to it, um, but still it's tile. So it's very, very neat and very easy to use. All right, so let's add uh, colliders. So starting with the player, I just, I just selected the player. I'm going to add a component. I'm going to say collider. And I know that it's small. I realize this. Um, I'm not even sure if you can see it. it. Might be my Is my face in the way? I just realized maybe my face is away on the stream. Um, if, if it is, let me know. I'm going to try to talk you through it, though. Um, so we have a, a variety of, of uh, colliders here. We're going to be using the box collider because we have a very simplistic image for our sprite. Um, but if you had a very complicated image and you wanted pixel perfect collision, you could add a, a different collider and it would it would be more specific. It, it will, however, take more resources in order to do the calculations for that particular collider. The box collider and I think the circle collider are one of the, the, the most uh, resource uh, non-intensive, non I guess you could say. Uh, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. So we're going to choose the box collider 2D because this is a 2D asset. Hopefully you'll notice that there is a green box around it, which is quite large. The reason why it's so large is because this image has some transparency to it. It's not, it's not the size of the actual astronaut. My face appears below that. Thanks for letting me know. I'll, tr I'll try to take that into consideration. Uh, actually, let me, let me see if I can move, hide my face for, for the temporary. So can you, uh, can you still hear me? I want to make sure I didn't lose my audio when I did that. Um, I'll, I'll give it a second and have some water. We all good? Can you still hear me? I, I, I'm hoping yes. Everything look good? All right. I'm going to assume that you can hear me, hopefully. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Perfect. All right. So there's that green box. So we're going to shrink it. Um, so I'm going to go into the box collider 2D component. So our 
our sprite, our player game object. This is just a game object, has a sprite renderer, a rigid body 2D, and a collider. And for the most part, they all have the default except for the sprite which we've assigned. So I'm going to click on this little edit collider button, and it's going to let me choose how large I want the box to be. So I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to shrink it uh, so that way the box is as close to possible uh, to this astronaut picture. All right, so that should be good. Um, the box is smaller, I'm gonna check that so that way it's uh, we're no longer in edit mode. Um, and I am going to hit play. And it still fell through. It fell through because we don't have any colliders on the actual uh, floor surface. So we can actually add uh, collision detection on individual tiles inside of the tile map. So if I were to click on ground, right now we have a tile map and a tile map renderer, uh, kind of like a sprite, but it's tiles. We're going to add a component. We're going to add a collider, uh, but this time around, I'm going to add a tile map collider 2D. Um, so this is for tile map. So I'm going to click it. And it might be a little hard to see, but it made a green outline between each tile in our tile map. If I were to hit play, it should work. I didn't touch any of the settings. So our astronaut no longer falls through the ground. But we can improve upon this. So right now, we have collision detection on the corners in the middle of these tiles. These are areas that our player will never reach. So it's, it's doing inefficient calculations on those areas uh, for, for, th for purposes that we'll never meet. So what we can do is we can actually add another component to our tile map. This time around, I'm going to say uh, Composite Collider 2D. When I added the Composite Collider 2D to the tile map, it added a rigid body. So if I hit play, both fall down because the rigid body, remember, is the physics. So we added physics to the floor surface or the tile map. So what we can actually do is we can change it from dynamic for the body type of the rigid body to static. So it's going to still have physics interactions, but it's no longer going to have any kind of gravity associated to it. Now, it still has the green stuff, the, the green uh, boundaries. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tile map collider 2D, and I'm going to click on used by composite. And when I did that, now we only have green outlines around the tile map so on the exteriors we don't we're no longer checking for collisions on the inside and you'll notice that these are two separate entities as far as the tile map is concerned you would think that maybe this whole thing would be wrapped in a, in a collision box but it's not it's actually on a per tile basis so it makes it very easy to add collidable surfaces in your game as far as your environment goes and remember you can add multiple layers as far as the tile map goes and uh, treat them differently. So if I were to hit play, everything looks good. Uh, but our player doesn't move yet. Uh, and that's fine, we're gonna get there. Uh, we're doing things step by step, so that way hopefully you can take this material and build uh, a nice game for yourself and release it to the App Store because this is, this is really fun stuff. Um, you, can, you, can, you can do all of this in about an hour. We're gonna, we're gonna shoot for an hour here uh, to have something that's pretty interesting to work with. Um, so I'm going to stop it. The next step is going to be animations. Um, so having static images is not, uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, these are, these are nice assets that we were provided, but it's going to be a lot more interesting when we have something that's animated. So what we can do is we can click on the player. We can add another component. So this is, Unity is very component driven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add component and I'm going to add an animator. So I'm not going to add animation, it's going to be animator. So in Unity, uh, there's such a thing as called an animation, which is an animation clip. So for example, a walking animation or an idle animation. And then we have an animator, which is an animation controller. And that helps us decide, well, when should we be idle? When should we be walking? Things like that. Um, so we're going to create a new animation. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the astronaut asset pack, and I'm going to click on animations. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I am going to say create and I am going to create an animator controller and I'm going to call that astronaut. I'm going to click on my player again. I'm going to scroll down to the animator and I'm going to drag the astronaut animator controller to the controller. Now what I can do is I can go to window and I can go to animation and animator. It added a tab for me there. And these are three states that it added by default. So this is the animator controller, which is now attached to our player. So the any state, anything that's attached to the any state means that we can now uh, switch our animation directly to that state. Doesn't matter where we're coming from. It could be from, a, a, we can go from a, a walk to a jump. We can do anything. Anything that's attached, we can navigate to. The entry state, that's our default animation. When we first start our game, the entry state will trigger and that will be our animation. The exit state, when the exit state is called, the animations recycle into the entry state. So if we are, for example, jumping or maybe attacking. When the attack animation is done, maybe we link it to the exit state and then it goes back to idle. Uh, we're gonna play around with this. Uh, actually, so what happens is uh, the astronaut uh, asset pack, it came with some animations. So I'm gonna type in idle. I'm gonna scroll through and look for the idle animation. It's, it's one of these triangles. Um, so I'm gonna say idle down and I'm going to drag it into uh, this this animator. So I'm going to say idle down, I'm going to drag it in, and by default it's added to that entry. We have to have an entry state. Um, and if I were to hit play now, the, the astronaut should be animated. Hopefully it, it shows on the stream, but the astronaut is kind of uh, kind of bouncing around. Uh, so hopefully hopefully that looks uh, decent there. So let's add another animation. Let's add a walking animation. And, and we're fortunate that all of this was created for us in the asset pack. It's actually not difficult to, to animate a sprite, which we'll see soon. Uh, but we're going to use what was provided to us by uh, this astronaut uh, sprite developer. And for anyone coming on new, uh, this is live. This is part of the Tracy developer meetup. So if you have questions, please engage in the chat. Uh, and if you're already hanging out in this meetup, please take a minute to subscribe to the YouTube channel and give it a thumbs up for this particular video. All right, so let's go ahead and go back into the animator controller. Let's go ahead and look for uh, the walk animation that was provided to us. I'm gonna say walk side, and we're looking for the triangle. They provided us animation controllers as well, but I I've, I've like to make my own so that way I can add uh, several different animation states. So I'm gonna drag walk side up there. It's not automatically attached to anything. So I'm going to right click on any state and I'm gonna say make transition and I'm gonna drag it to walk side. I'm also gonna right click on any state and I'm gonna drag it to idle down. So even though that we are entering the idle down by default, uh, we are able to switch the navig switch the animation to idle down at any time, just like the walk side. Uh, so how do we get there? Because if I click the play button, it's gonna take us to our scene, it's, it's doing the idle. If I click on the animator, you can see that is just on repeat idle down. So how do we get to the walk side? So we can actually do that by creating animator variables, so animator parameters. So if I click on parameters, uh, inside the tab for the animator, I have four options. I can create a float, int, bool, and trigger parameter. I use mostly the bool and the trigger. Uh, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna explain what the trigger is because that's a little, little oddball one, but I'm gonna create a bool for now. I'm gonna call this one do walk. Doesn't really matter what you call it. It is unchecked, so it is false by default. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the transition line that goes to walk side. In the inspector, I'm gonna click the conditions and it's gonna use that transition if do walk is true. So let's go ahead and say it's true by default. So when the game starts, 
I'm going to hit play. All right. So it's doing a walk animation, but it kind of looks like a run. It doesn't look that great. It's doing this because we need to change some settings for the animator. So make sure that the transition for the do walk is selected and we would change the settings. Now it's constantly trying to call itself. So we want to make sure that can transition to self is disabled. So what are some of these other options mean? So has exit time means that, well, after the animation has finished, do we want it to automatically go to the entry? And we don't because essentially when we're walking, we're probably holding down a key on the keyboard and we want to continue walking and not exit when the animation is done. So we want to continue the animation on a loop. The duration, uh, it's basically what's the transition like between the animation states? Do you want it to be kind of a slow transition or do you want it to be instant? I like it to be instant. So I like when I hit that keyboard button, I want it to instantly start walking. So I'm going to set that to zero. Now, if I were to hit play, we're still uh, do walk is true. It now has a more fluid walking uh, animation motion. If I were to go back and uncheck it, we have idle again. So uh, we're going to do a few things. So we're going to go to the animator. Uh, we're going to make these settings the same. So we're going to say trans can transition to self false, uh, fixed duration, zero. Uh, doesn't have an exit time because uh, it's just going to go forever. So if I were to run this, we we have a player, a sprite that's animated, that has physics, that has collision uh, detection. We have a uh, terrain here, a tile map with collision. And we've done all of this without writing a single line of code so far. So this is all uh, Unity power right there. So we're going to get into the scripting side of things now. And this might be a, a good uh, short, short break period. See if there's any questions in the chat. I do want this to be interactive. Um, even if this is your first time making games, I'm hoping this is a this is an intro that will will get you in the right direction when it comes to, to making games. And I just noticed though, uh, the transition for the idle down. I don't have a condition, so let's say that when do walk is false, then we're idle. Um, so, is anyone actively making games with Unity that's that's currently watching? I'd be curious. I think Nolan, I think I think you said you were in the game industry for a little while. You probably have uh, maybe a little more experience than I do on this stuff. And I'll actually, uh, let me put my face back in there. So uh, we're going to be scripting in a second. All right. No comments as of yet. I don't know if there's a delay in YouTube or not. Um, again, this is my first time streaming uh, this meetup to YouTube. Um, so I don't know it, it if how different it is from Twitch. Yeah, I made games in a previous life, but never with Unity. All right, fair enough. Uh, Unity has does make make it uh, a dream in, in my experience. I, I have a game I, I, I put on the App Store um, like in 2014. Uh, it, was, it was a fun experience. It made me like $2 total. Um, but it, it, it was fun more than anything. C++ custom mate, uh, code bases. Wow. Um, that I'm sure that there's plenty of benefits to doing that, but I, I would not want to do that. I mean, unity, unity, um, there's a lot of high budget games made with unity. Um, I, I think my favorite, um, is, uh, hollow Knight. But I mean, in recent news, I, I think uh, Fall Guys uh, Ultimate Knockout was Unity. Um, my kid plays a, a Paw Patrol game on Nintendo Switch that was made with Unity. Um, so there's a lot of uh, popular games with Unity. I, I'm sure there's plenty of other ones. Um, but all right, maybe maybe we continue now. So the next step, I want to be able to uh, to show different animations. I want to be able to select that uh, parameter uh, through code. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the root level of my assets. I'm going to say create new folder. I'm going to call this scripts. 
Your directory structure doesn't really matter. I'm going to go into the scripts directory. I'm kind of old too, uh, in the chat. Um, I'm going to say create C sharp script. I know that this script is going to be for my player. So I'm going to call it player. Now a little, little background on scripts, uh, because this is a, for me, this was a very different topic coming from JavaScript and go and all these other technologies. You're adding scripts on a per component basis. That script is meant to control everything about the component that not the component, the game object that you're attaching it to. They're meant to be kind of uh, plug and play, uh, you might say. So if you wanted to remove something from the game, you could very easily remove that item from the game and everything would be kind of consolidated. So you'd be removing the script with it, the, the sprite, uh, graphic, everything. So that way um, you don't have to manage this massive 100,000 line uh, code file that controls every aspect of your game. It's very, very separated in the development approach, which is, it's, it, it took me a while to grasp, but it, it's actually very nice um, and, and very easy to use. So we have the player. Uh, before I open it up, what I do want to do is I want to take it and I clicked on player, the, the player game object. I want to drag it into the inspector for the player as a component. And I think it's probably blocking it again. So I will hide my face. Uh, so I added it. It's a player script. It has just the defaults. So I'm going to double click it. It opened it up in Visual Studio Code. Um, so I'm actually going to, uh, oh, it's going to try to install a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's, let's see if I can hide. There we go. Show us a little more screen real estate here. Um, so this is the default, um, file for our script. It's a C sharp script. Uh, if you're a JavaScript developer, C sharp, not that hard. It's like TypeScript. Um, it, it's very small, uh, learning curve. Um, and it's very forgiving, but we have two lifecycle events right here. We have the start and the update. The start is called on the first frame. The update is called every frame. There are other lifecycle events that you can add to like awake, which is called, uh, before the start, or there's the fixed update, which is called kind of like the update on a loop, but it's for physics related events, because even though that it's on a loop, it's not necessarily once per frame. It's based on how often uh, the physics needs to be recalculated. Um, so definitely research online what those life cycle events are. We're going to be just using a, a few of them, uh, but there are, there are a variety to choose from. So what we need to do, so we need to gain access to the components that are attached to our game object. And if this, this editor is too small, uh, please let me know and I will zoom in. But for now, Let's go ahead and add some variables. So I'm going to say private. This is going to be rigid body 2D and uh, following best uh, syntax for C sharp. From what I understand, I'm going to say underscore because it's a private variable. And I am going to say R, uh, R B 2D. It's going to be my variable name uh, because we want access to the rigid body component. We also want access to the animator component, which I will call animator inside of the start. So on the first frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say RB2D equals get component. And I'm going to say rigid body 2D. So now I can play around with the rigid body 2D. Um, and what that means is I can, I can disable physics. I can change the physics. I can, uh, do all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to be using it for changing the, the velocity for, for player movement. Uh, but you, you basically have full control over all of the physics by including it in your script for this particular player. And by this particular player, I mean, whatever this script is attached to. So say you create something, uh, more generic, or maybe you say enemies are also players. I don't know. Um, anything that this script is attached to will have the same kind of abilities. So we're going to say animator equals get component. This is going to be animator. 
Now I have access to the animator, which will allow me to access the animator uh, parameters, which will allow us to change the um, animations. I'm also going to add two more variables. I'm going to say private. This is going to be a Boolean. And I'm going to say do walk left and private Boolean do walk right. And I'm going to default them as false. So these are going to represent whether or not we are trying to walk. Now inside the update, I mentioned that there is a fixed update and an update, one for physics, one for not physics. We're going to worry about just changing uh, the animation state and we are going to be collecting input. For those reasons, it's probably a good idea to keep it inside of the update method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say do walk left equals input dot get uh, get key key code and I'm going to say left arrow. So if the left arrow key on the keyboard is pressed, uh, this will be true. Uh, there are other key codes that you can use. You could also use a more generic uh, get horizontal and get vertical that Unity provides, uh, which will allow you to use common common key sets for uh, vertical and horizontal, such as A, W, S, D, and the arrow keys. But if you use that, uh, there will be certain um, uh, throttles that Unity puts in place that you, you could always fiddle with, but I, I find that it's more responsive and easy to use just to define the keys that you want to use. Um, so it's totally up to you. We're going to do the same thing for the right. Um, so it'll be true if the right arrow is pressed. And we're not going to look at edge cases. I realize that if we push both the left and the right, uh, our game will probably explode. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, so what we're going to actually do is we're going to say if we're going to say do walk left. So if that's true, and I'll just I'll just point it out so that way it's a little easier to read. Uh, if that's true. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say animator dot set bool because we know our parameter is a boolean. We know that we called our parameter do walk and we're going to set it to true. And I'm going to clone this and you'll see why. Uh, and I'm also going to make this an if else. This is going to be do walk right. It's also going to uh, call this this set it to true. And yes, there's only one animation. We're going to get there in a second. Uh, they're both going to do the same thing. Else, as kind of the default, we're going to say animator dot set bool is going to be do walk false. So remember, uh, if we go back into Unity, and it's going to reload our script. If we go back into Unity, remember, for the transition, we're looking for do walk is true starts walking, and then do walk false is going to go to the idle. Um, so let's, I think we can run this and it should work out. So I'm going to hit uh, the play button here. We have idle. I'm going to hit the left arrow key and he starts walking. And when I let go, he immediately goes back into idle. If I hit the right arrow key, well, he still walks left because that's the animation that I was provided in this asset pack. So you have a few options here. We could create another animation. We would have to create our, our own uh, sprites. We would have to flip them. We would have to create a new animation and we could easily switch between them that way. Problem with that is if we create new image assets, our final uh, game will be larger in size, which isn't too big of a problem on PC, but on mobile or even Nintendo Switch where storage uh, is not unlimited, that could be a problem. So there's an easier solution to this, at least for this example, if we want to flip the, the animation, is inside of our code, what we can do is, say for example, do left. We can say uh, vector3, so this is a XYZ space. I'm going to say local scale equals transform.local scale. So when I say transform, just like that, I am getting the transformation information on the game object that this sprite is currently attached to. 
So I'm getting the XYZ information, the scale information, the rotate information for, in this circumstance, the player game object. So I'm creating a local variable of the local scale. Then what I'm doing is I'm saying local scale equals, not local scale, local scale.x equals negative one. And then I'm saying transform dot local scale equals local scale. And you're probably wondering, well, why didn't I just say transform dot local scale dot x equals negative one? I can't do that. It it won't. It's a protected variable. It won't let me edit it that way. I have to uh, create this local variable. I have to create a new vector three, and I have to reset it. Now I'm going to copy that code, and I am going to paste it down here, and I'm going to say positive one. And it may be mismatched, but by saying local scale x negative one and one, we're basically saying let's flip the image. So if I go back into Unity and I hit play, now if I hit that left arrow, I have them flipped. I have the wrong the the wrong numbers, but this is the left arrow I'm pressing, and then this is the right arrow I'm pressing. So I, I have the I have the negative numbers wrong. I, this is easily fixable. But now I have two different animations using the same assets. So let's go ahead and fix that before I forget. So this is positive one. This is negative one. I'm going to just, for sanity's sake, uh, go ahead and try it. All right, so left arrow, right arrow, and in the end, it all goes back to idle. And uh, we're not actually moving, but it does look a lot more slick now for our game. Um, and we could easily change these key presses to click events if we're on mobile or uh, controller events if we're on a gaming console. So now what we want to do is we probably want to move around. So we can do that inside of the player script. So let's give it a shot. So we're going to go into the uh, player.cs file inside of, in this case, Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you're using. Because we're going to move the player, that involves moving the, moving the player with physics. So we do have to use the fixed update. So we're going to say void fixed update. It's not going to stop you from using physics inside of the update method, but you're going to get strange results over time. Um, so we're going to say fixed update. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if I'm going to say if uh, do walk left equals true, I'm going to say rigid body RB 2D and I forgot the underscore equals actually dot velocity equals new vector two because this is going to be uh, move it's, it's a rigid body 2d so this is 2d space so vector two not not 3d because uh, we choose uh, vector three up here because our our game object overall does work in the three three dimensional space so we're going to say vector two i'm going to say negative one we need to provide it a speed at which to, to travel for, for velocity. So let's go ahead and make that uh, uh, a public variable. And I'll show you why it's public in just a second. But we're going to say uh, public walking speed. That is actually a float. And if, you, if you have any questions, please stop me because this is live. This is live for the Tracy developer meetup, tracydevs.com. Uh, so uh, please Participation is always appreciated. Uh, so I'm going to say negative one times walking speed. And for the Y, so that's the X, so left and right. For the Y, because we're not taking any input for, for the Y, we're just going to set it to whatever the natural Y velocity is for this particular uh, game object. So I'm going to say rb 2 dvelocityy So um, if we're falling, if we fall off the edge, it'll naturally fall, uh, but we will be able to move left and right. So uh, let's go ahead and clone the line, kind of repeating our steps here. This is going to be walk right, and I could have the, the negative numbers mixed up again, hopefully not. I think this might be a positive one, and this might be a negative one. 
All right, uh, so here we have that. So I'm going to save it. Uh, we're going to see if if we can walk. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Unity. I'm going to, I can't hit play yet. We don't have a walking speed to find. So I'm going to click on player and I'm going to scroll down to uh, the walking speed, which now appears in the player script. So public variables, you're allowed to set public variables in the inspector. And the reason why this might be valuable is because if this script appears on your player and your enemy and, and all this other stuff, you want the values to be set independently. So maybe, maybe you're creating a, I don't know, Call of Duty style game, right? So you're going to have many players. They're all going to have a player script, but maybe the players that have been playing a long time have perks. You want to be able to define those separately or who knows? I, I don't know. There could be many scenarios, but we're going to set the walking speed to, I don't know, four could be too fast. I'm going to hit play. Oh, it didn't set. So one thing about Unity that's weird is if you edit anything while playing, it sort of simulates it and then resets it after you stop. It's good for testing, but it could get annoying if you're not paying attention. Um, so I set it to four. I'm going to hit play again. It's going to fall out of the sky. I'm going to walk. <laughs> and I got, the, I got the values mixed up again. So let's let's go back. Let's go ahead and set this to negative one. It happens. It's not a not a difficult fix. All right, I'm gonna go back into Unity. I'm gonna hit play. So if I walk uh, right, he goes right. It animates and he walks. If I let go of the keyboard, you can see that it slides. This could be good. This could be bad. It depends on what you're after. So remember, we, we're dealing with physics. There's there's friction involved. Uh, there's there's gravity. There's there's the mass of the player. If we start adjusting the mass of the player, or the the gravity scale that the player uses, or adjusting the friction, we can control whether or not that slide happens. We can increase the slide. We can decrease the slide. I don't want any slide at all. We're gonna we're gonna disable it completely, and we're gonna do it by adjusting the velocity in our code. So. I'm going to set another scenario here for the fixed update. So if we're not walking left and we're not walking right, I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to zero it out as far as the X velocity goes. The Y velocity is going to maintain the same. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to move around, and, and as soon as I let go of that keyboard, the player stops. Now, this is it's totally up to you on how you want to design this. If you want some slide involved, you probably don't want to mess with the velocity. You probably want to mess with the uh, rigid body information on the player itself. Uh, but that's up to you. Uh, there could be benefits. I mean, maybe you're on one of those icy levels where uh, you, you're supposed to... You, when you cross it, you slide around. I know that there they exist in Mario and Donkey Kong Country and, th and things like that. Uh, it really depends on what you're after. But if I walk and I walk off the cliff, he falls. You can tell that he, he did actually rotate a bit. Hopefully uh, it, it showed. I'll go again. Yeah, so he rotated. Uh, that's because of the physics as well. There's a... Uh, it, it has pivot information there. I don't want any kind of rotations to happen. So if I wanted to, I can go into the rigid body for the player and click on constraints. I can freeze the rotation in the Z. So if I start falling or the way I collide with something happens, it's never going to rotate. Um, so that's that's where we are now. So we, we can actually walk around on this very simple map. Let's keep going. There's a few things I wanted to demonstrate, uh, which should put you in the right direction for developing your own game. Um, and then uh, hopefully you can create something nice out of it. The next thing we want to do is move the camera around. So in theory, if, if I zoom out, we may have a map that expands way far outside of the viewport. Uh, so we probably want our camera to move with us. Unless we're making like a Legend of the Zelda game, the old school one where it's a screen-based game where you move to the next room and it just loads a new scene or whatever whatever it's doing. It's totally up to you. 
uh, or if you want it to be super fluid with no load zones, uh, you can have the camera follow you around. So I'm gonna create a new script. I'm gonna call this camera. If I click on main camera, I want to attach it to the camera game object because this is gonna uh, be everything that's involved with the camera itself. So I'm gonna drag it over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it in my editor. And it, we're gonna get the same experience that we got with the player. But this is gonna be for the camera game object. So what I wanna do is I wanna add a public variable. So I'm gonna say public. This is going to be transform. And this is going to be player. So we want to get the transformation information of the game object that we want the camera to follow. In this case, we know it's going to be the player. It could be, it could be called whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go into the update because we want it to follow every, every frame of the scene. We're going to say transform dot position equals new vector three because the camera operates in 3d space what we're going to say is we're going to say player dot position dot x so the camera is going to center on the player's x position we don't want the y to change if the player jumps or falls off the cliff uh, we don't want the camera to follow it so we can say transform dot position dot y and likewise with c so if i save it and i go back into unity and i click on the main camera could not did i oh i misspelled transform all right so transform forgot the s All right, so I'm going back into Unity. I click on camera. I now have a player uh, variable inside of the inspector because it's a public variable. I can set it from the inspector. What I wanna do is I wanna take the game object that I want the camera to follow, in this case, player. It, it has no relation to the actual variable name uh, other than that uh, it's more of a category for, for code cleanliness. I'm gonna drag the player game object into this field. So now it's saying that the camera will monitor the transformation information of that game object. I'm gonna hit play. Now when I move around, the camera follows me. And if I fall off the edge, the, the, well, I can still move left and right, but I'm falling forever and uh, the camera is not following me. Um, so that's that's a nifty trick that could be useful in your 2D games, depending on the style that you're building. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add an enemy in here. So that way we're working with another script, some more game assets, um, and we can worry about uh, some, some more uh, best practices. And then we're going to bring it to a close. So uh, we're probably got about 10 minutes to go, maybe a little less. And if you have any questions, like I said earlier, this is live. Uh, please ask questions. I, I'm happy to answer. Uh, if you're new to the to the YouTube channel, new to the group, uh, please check out tracydevs.com. Please hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And then if you're liking this video so far, hit that like button on the video itself. So that way uh, it shows up more in search. All right, so let's go ahead and create an enemy. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say create empty game object and I'm gonna name it enemy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a sprite renderer to the enemy. And my enemy this time around is going to be from the pixel adventure package. I'm gonna say main characters and I'm going to say pink man. Um, this is just what, what the author of that particular asset package has called everything. Now, they do not provide us with pre-made animations. This is where we're going to create our own animation. They do provide us with sprite sheets uh, that are 32 by 32 characters, or 32 by 32 pixels per unit. Uh, they do provide us with an idle, and I'm going to take the idle, and I am going to drag it 
into the sprite area. So if I zoom in, you can see I have a, I have a very small uh, image right there. That's because that's just the type of asset that was provided. It's nothing against us or the developer or the, the artist. What we can do is we can scale it. It'll look zoomed in, but uh, it's something we can still work with. So I'm going to say, let's say maybe four, uh, maybe 4.5, try to make them the same size as the astronaut. All right, that's good enough. Uh, so we have our, our, our uh, enemy. It's just a static image. If I were to hit play, it's just going to float there because he has nothing uh, assigned to him. So let's go ahead and give it a, a rigid body. Uh, so this is the enemy. I'm going to say rigid body 2D. Uh, I'm going to say that I also want to add a collision box because if I were to hit play, this sprite would just fall through the floor. So I'm going to say add component. This is going to be a uh, box collider 2D. I am going to click on the edit button for the uh, box collider and just bring it in so that way it's a little more tight. And just a little bit more. Perfect. If I hit play, uh, it should fall and, and just rest on the floor. And it does. Uh, if I run into it, I can knock it off the cliff. Fantastic. Um, now what we want to do is we probably want to add uh, an animation to this particular enemy here. Uh, so I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add the animator, not the animation, the animator. I'm going to right click uh, right in this directory with the main characters and I'm going to say create. And it, it doesn't have to be in this directory. I'm just trying to keep things close together. Uh, I'm going to say animator controller. I'm going to call it uh, pink, pink man. I'm going to click on enemy. I'm going to drag it into the animator controller so that way it's linked up. I'm going to go to the animator. We're left with a, with a clean animation slate for this, for this particular selection. If I click on player, it still has my other uh, animators there, or my animation states. This is for enemy. So we need to create an animation clip because it doesn't provide us one uh, out of the box here. So I'm going to click on window. I'm going to go to animation, animation. I'm going to lock it in here on my dock. I am going to say create. So this is going to create a new animation clip. I'm going to call it pink man idle. I'm going to save it. It added it to my animator controller. But my animation clip is empty. It has nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the idle images and I'm going to drag them into this animator clip for pink man idle. I'm going to set the sample rate. I'm going to slow it down because 60 frames per second is too much. I'm going to bring it to 20. That's uh, for, for unless my game, unless I'm expecting my game to be much more fast as far as the frames per second uh, 20 is a good number so let's let's test it out it should it's defaulting to pink man idle so i'm going to hit play and now we have both of them kind of doing the same animation uh, but they're they're bouncing around so let's go ahead and, and add another one so i'm going to uh, go to the enemy i am going to say create new clip I'm going to call this pink man hit. So when the pink man is hit, I'm going to save it. I am going to go to hit and select the images. There's, there's far fewer of them than the astronaut. This is a much more low scale, um, sprite asset compared to the, the astronaut is actually very high def. So I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to slow it down to 20. I'm going to look at my animator. It added pink man hit. So let's go ahead and uh, say make transition from any state to pink man hit. I am going to add a new uh, variable here. I'm going to say trigger instead of bool. And I'm going to say hit. So the trigger 
uh, is actually it's like a boolean, but after you set it to true, it's gonna it's gonna run, and then it's gonna set itself to false. You don't have to manually define it as false after you've used it. So it's a one-time use. And I'm saying that it's it's a one-time use for this example because after I hit this this object, I don't want it to keep going. Well, I do, but I don't want it to go on forever. So the pink man hit, I want it to animate a few times. And then I want to exit, and I want to go back to the idle state. So if I right click and say make transition from pink man hit to exit, this is where we can actually define the exit time. So I don't want it to just run for 0.28 seconds. That's too, too fast. I'm going to change it to go for maybe uh, three seconds. I don't want any transition to happen. I want it to be instant. Likewise, when I go into the hit state, I also want it to be instant. And I don't want it to be able to transition to itself because that'll create a weird experience. If I want to, I can say make transition to pink man idle. There's uh, there's no logic to it. I'll, I'll just, I won't do that. I'll leave it like that for now. So we have hit. Hit will trigger pink man uh, hit. It'll exit after three seconds and go back into the pink man idle state. So I'm gonna save it. Now, how do we want to trigger that animation? Well, the enemy should be treated separately from the player. I don't want to have my enemy logic inside of my player script because if I ever wanted to remove this enemy, well, I'd have to go into my player script and make adjustments. So let's create another script. I'm going to create a script, C sharp script, and I'm going to call it enemy. I'm going to click on enemy and I'm going to drag the enemy script into uh, the game object as, as a component. I'm going to open it up in my editor. So this should look familiar. I'm going to go to player. I'm going to copy the rigid body and the animator to save me a little bit of typing. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get the rest of it. Remember, this is isolated to just the enemy because that's what it's attached to, not the player. Now, if we're hit, if how do we want to animate? We want to check for a collision. So we're going to do that inside of the uh, a special function that's reserved for Unity. I'm going to say uh, on collision uh, enter 2D, and this is going to be collision 2D, and we're going to be able to see what what the collision was. So enter 2D means that the collision has just happened. There are other states as well. I think there's an on collision 2D uh, where it's actively colliding. It didn't just start colliding, it's actively colliding, and then there's an exit, so we are stopping the collision. It's up to you to decide what you want to, to use. There's also a trigger as well, uh, where if you're using uh, triggers instead of collisions, uh, that's a whole other story, which uh, I can get to in a, in a minute. But what we can say is we can say animator dot set trigger hit. So when a collision happens, uh, it will do the hit animation. Now watch, it's not going to work quite correctly, but you'll see why. So hit play. It's actually not doing what's expected at all. So let's see what we got. I probably have an error somewhere. Yeah, so uh, I, I missed a step here. So even though that we hit, if I go to the animator and I click on this transition line on how to actually get to pink man hit, I don't have any conditions. So let's add one. The condition is that hit is true. So I'm gonna hit play again. All right, it's already showing it already showed that animation. It already showed that animation because this particular enemy sprite collided with the ground. A collision did happen. Now we want to make an adjustment. We don't we don't want it to say that it was hit when it when it hits the floor. We want to say it was hit when it hits the when it reaches the player, which it'll do right now because it just did, but we don't want it to trigger when it when it hits the floor. So we can go back into our code and we can add an if statement. So we can say if 
collision dot collider dot name equals player. So in the case that it collides with the player, and player is the name of the game object. Um, so if it collides with the with a game object named player, uh, then it will set the trigger. So let's give it a shot. So I'm going to hit play. So it did not trigger that animation. So I am going to hit it. He fell off the edge. It showed the animation though. Uh, so that's that's just some of the cool stuff you can do with Unity. I think this might be a good wrap up point um, since we, we went over quite a few topics and we have what could be very easily expanded into a real game. Um, so as far as what we what we accomplished, so we set up a scene. Uh, this is a 2D scene, just uh, just a single scene. We created a player. That player has a sprite renderer for our image that we see right here. It has a rigid body, which has the physics. Uh, it allows us to fall into the ground. We have the box collider for collisions. The animator, which allows us to change animation states between walking and idling. And we have the script. Now, most of what we saw was just drag and drop. We, we didn't actually do too much scripting. And I'll show you the script in just a minute. Then we set up a tile map. So the tile map allowed us to draw our world using square tiles. So if I went into the scene, we have squares and we could just select these squares from the tile map and start drawing our game. And in this case, they have collision information on them because our ground has a tile map collider and we chose to give it a composite co collider so that way it doesn't calculate collisions in between tiles only on the exteriors so it saves us some computations um, so that's pretty cool you can add multiple layers to your uh, tile maps so maybe you have a layer for the for the surfaces maybe you have a layer for um, any kind of artifacts such as I don't know bushes that might exist on top maybe you have a light uh, where the bushes are not uh, you can't collide with them maybe you have a layer for traps so things that damage the player who knows totally up to you uh, we have enemy so <coughs> sorry <coughs> oh sorry um, so we have enemy so the the um, and let me turn my video back on since I'm just walking over stuff so we have the enemy uh, which is like the player has a rigid body, it has, has the uh, box collider, it has a script. Um, it's a different script than the player. Um, if we look at our scripts, if we go into Visual Studio Code, uh, we have, let's, let's start with the player. The player, uh, we have the components, we have access to them, and we're collecting the input from the keyboard. We're changing the animation states, and in this case we're flipping the animations uh, because we only have one direction for walking. And inside of our fixed update, we're actually just changing the velocity to actually move the player around. Now, when we move the player around, we have the camera follow it. So we set the position of the camera to the position of the player uh, for the X axis. So that way it follows the player around. An enemy is very basic too. The new thing that we introduced is the actual on collision enter 2D function. Um, so that way we can uh, see if the player, the game object name player, collides with uh, the enemy, so whatever the script is attached to, uh, then we do the, the hit animation. Um, so there's, there's a lot of really fun stuff that you can, that you can do with this. Um, and like I said uh, at the beginning, I even put in the, in the listing on this particular event page, uh, we just used free assets from the Unity Asset Store. Um, so that's really cool. If you're not an artist, I'm not an artist. I have no idea what I'm doing uh, for art. It makes it a lot easier. And uh, not, not everything's free. You can pay for stuff too, but uh, most of what you get is, is really high quality. Um, and Unity itself, Unity, even though, here I'll show it real quick, uh, you can actually build, um, oops, you can actually build to different, uh, different outputs. So for example, let's say I wanna build to Windows. Uh, let's say that maybe I wanna change uh, the player settings. I wanna say, uh, this is going to be uh, windowed. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is fine. 
Um, and let's go ahead and exit out, build and run. I'll say maybe this is the distribution directory. Doesn't exist. Let me create it. This is going to build and run. Uh, as you can see in this menu on the left here, there are a lot of output platforms, and that's not all of them. If you uh, if, if you contact Unity, if you get special licenses, you can develop for Nintendo Switch. You can develop for the Xbox uh, Series X or the PlayStation 5. Uh, there's a lot of different platforms you can develop for, and here's the actual game. It actually performs better uh, when it's when it's built rather than using the preview. Um, so. Uh, it's, it's really easy to create cross-platform games, so games that even work on mobile. Um, so you don't need any mobile experience to make this possible. And uh, if you're creative enough, you can, you can create something really cool. Um, just before we wrap up here, I uh, just wanted to go back uh, to the web browser. Uh, we are trying this new. This is on YouTube. This is the first time uh, that we're streaming the group to YouTube. Uh, we're still meeting remotely because... Uh, of COVID, but if you go to the event page, uh, I know that this event's almost over, uh, you can see f coming up events uh, on what we're having for the group. I encourage you to sign up uh, to the group mailing list. I'm not going to spam you. You're going to get a reminder of the event that's happening, and you're going to get a recap email with the on-demand video, so that way, in case you missed it, you can go back and watch it. If you want to speak for the group, for now we're remote. Um, so we'll take, uh, if you've got a cool topic that you want to share, reach out. Uh, I have the email address uh, on the speak for us link. I, I'd, I'd love it if you um, spoke for this group, if you had something interesting to share. Um, the videos, since we're streaming on YouTube live, they will automatically be added to this playlist, Tracy Developer Meetup. Um, so just go ahead and uh, and see see which one pops up. I'm not sure if this current one's in this list. Oh, it's right here. Um, it'll, it should appear after, um, if there's no other questions, I mean, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. Um, I'll give it a minute. Does anyone have any questions who's viewing in, in, uh, the stream live right now? I know this is late on a Friday evening. Like I said, I, I can't stress this enough. If you like video games, developing video games with Unity is fun. Um, you don't need to be a great developer. Um, you don't need to be a great artist. You can still make something pretty cool. Uh, and games can be anything. It could be a platformer style game. Uh, it could be a... I, I know my kid likes the My Talking Tom games where you just dress up your character. Um, so anything can be considered a game. Um, no questions. Thanks. That was great. Thanks, Nolan. Thanks for sticking around for the whole time. Um, appreciate you being here. Uh, if there's no further questions, I mean, one last time, uh, if, if you're new to the group, please, please subscribe. Hit that like button on the video and I will uh, see you next time. Thanks for coming out, everyone.